I'm Darren J. Beanie. Uh, thank you for asking me to be part of the Cardiff Met reading series. It's a real privilege to have been asked to do so. I'm going to read some poems from The Machinery of Life. This is a mini collection of poems about love. It was published by the Hedgehog Poetry Press in July 2021. And I'm going to start with a poem called Under This Poem. Under this poem, I sleep warm in words and afterthoughts. I plunge, or an Eric, dreams hurtle, uninhibited, like an excursion of excited, witty travellers. Under this poem, I bury fears in closed casket. Pressed into the nooks of a gothic crypt, constructed with bottomless limes, unworthy of remembrance, little more than a set of second string considerations. Under this poem, you will find a peep show to my heart. Discover my soul. You will not see coincidence. So the second poem I'm going to read is called What is Love? It is documented, musty, weathered, ancient sentiment, essence so deep, bursting with a concoction of meaning, the nitty gritty of which hides in a labyrinth. Yet it breaks out in perpetuum, vibrant and animated. It pedals round the earth, preying on the blushing, crafty cat burglar, stealing hearts for pure pleasure, silent assailant, plundering and destroying. You may stare it in the face for an age before finally putting one plus one together. I remember sighting it in a flash, a dayglow acidic angel dancing on bubbles. It feeds simply off three little words that may shoot effortlessly from the lip, sprayed with the ease of spittle or a teasing hint. Where does that simple lyric go when uttered? To the land of meaningless tosh, to live short or die with stale gossip, or flourish, sustaining lifelong work, lasting, bequeathed as a coffin companion. Some live by the sound of those words contracted to their harmony, others flaunt them like overinflated cash, buying worthless passion. Love creates jesters, sultans, and migrants, decodes high times and mockery. It is who we are, with it or without it. I will be spot on in its proposition. Sorry about that, just listening to the full one of my favourite bands. Uh, that's a song called Your Heart Out. I set myself a poetry task of using titles of full songs to write poems and your heart out found its way into machinery of life i am shanty boy prizing your heart from its shell with black and blue sea salt kisses and vigorous vinegar stained handshakes anticipating my underarm clout will lead to a persuasive getaway as i jemmy your heart out convincingly plunging through the fresh skimpy glory hole before absconding. I will substitute Cupid's quivering arrows with harpoons of circumstance. Enact repeated romantic episodes of funness, retell my tenderness for you until I shoot your heart out. When I win my prize, I will be a wild saint. Tempt you with this tasty project as I fall for your full frontal tease. We will collapse, a couple of gasping creatures, you holding your heart out, me embracing it, assured with easy balance. This poem is called Strung Out and Under the Influence. We are Sid and Nancy, loaded and spent, Cameos in a Cheech and Chong flick. We are habit, beyond recreational, strung out on infinite street corners. I am hooked on your joints, ache for your tang, that smack. I crank you up, you trip my dragon, spin under my skin, I dilate for you. Up all night, 
persists through your veins, raving our hearts. Our score is high. Aphrodite is our dealer. And only losers waste love. The next poem is called Strewn. Each night love folds me away, neat. I sleep in Odysseus' bed and fall through Penelope's drop stitches. Dreams are virtuous and eternal, cosy, intricate. Morning at first sight is slow-mo. I wake like a hesitant Polaroid, instinct fletchous on the rise. My bunkhead gaze rotates over you and notices last night, love. Scattered you about the room, untidy. You erect me, topsy-turvy. I can't straighten you out. It's alternative attraction. Live in normal chaos. It's love. This is called Blocked Heart. Sunday afternoon sessions spent settling into sagging skin. Drinking non-stop philosophy. Pint glass tunnel vision, black light dregs. Forecast low, no claims required. Sentiment on the jukebox, ghosts in each lyric. Eros at the bar starts a commotion. In a heartbeat, I know a quaint cottage view, orchard sky, virtual daybreak. You let Eros buy you a pint, down it at first sight. Give me one of your hi-fi smiles and shout. Read the signs, punk. You order tequila with a splash. My insides start to undulate. The ripples move in reverse. Meet in the middle. I put in a call to Dino Rod for my heart. This one is called What's Love Got To Do With It? Love has everything to do with us. As I step over your piles of derelict clothes and wonder when you abandon a sorry looking tea bag on the side. Never mind the stains. As I snuffle, when I perform like a draining squirt or regular stand up. The times I just, well, just don't. On occasions, when we are both pissed. Those days it's all down to me, and certainly not you. When I forget sweet running on empty. How about when you just don't make sense? When we cry. When our hold is like Loctite. As the morning peeps and amazes us. Evenings as we sink into comfort. One. Hearing each other. Telling it like it is after we neglect. When you are there and I am somewhere else. When you are happy. And always when you are at ease. This one's called Love You Tender. Over time, I seem to have lost my gentle touch. Middle-aged spread has left me heavy-handed. I fumble about your personal fingers, thumbs and knuckles, as delicate as a rocket launch, making you tremble at the thought of what is to come. I grope my way around you like an awful puppeteer my gangling hands run amuck on your body, gallop over you like a rotund shire horse. Yet, eventually, you submit to my awkward wrestler's hold and become damp putty in my sweaty mitts. I'm not sure why, since I can seldom put my awkward finger on it. This next poem is called Twister. When our piles thwacked into one another, I tumbled, consumed by a tornado. Like Dorothy, I found myself swept along to an alternate place. I caught myself pondering. I must be brainless, nothing makes sense. And if only I could locate my heart, but you whipped it away. And I wish I had the courage to take you by the hand, drag you home. You gleamed, bright like rubies and emeralds, glinting in the glory of a straw hat morning. I was your pretty. Love developed, everything became clear, blemish and edit, black and white, you and me, polychromatic. This poem is called 
how many times can I say it? Stuck on an extra long solo venture, alternating opposing opinions, staying my silo versus hanging out in cattle markets. Until I heard your music, I interrupted your singing. Is your halo velvet? You put down your cello, vexed, slowly removed pink silk gloves, face full of smirk. My heart pumped blood through jello veins. I quaked in a voice reserved for gods. Yes, Apollo verbals. Hello, Venus. I thundered, my voice amplified, roaring in a speeding tremolo vehicle. My confidence increased, jam-packed with desire. I sputtered the full weight of my kilo verse. You flounced over, gliding as if in a pedalo vessel. Gave me the once over, a gigolo vetted. You grinned, my head span, we embraced a clincher, we dated, frequented finest bordello venues, drank cheap wine, ate exotic food, tomatello vegan stew. We swapped tokens, you bought me a polo vest, I knitted you a niche wool pullover. We leapt, now I am involving a pig in clover. While writing my master's, dissertation. I developed a bit of a thing for the Greek myths um, and for Eros, um, or Cupid as the Romans like to call him. And Cupid or Eros appear in quite a few of the poems that I wrote. And I wondered what he might do when he's not busy making people fall in love with each other. Now, I live in a village on the West Sun Sussex coast called East Preston. So this poem came about from those thoughts. It's called Eros in East Preston. Hot shot talent wasted. Gut reactions, fragments of archaeology. His fable binds, unbinds, dangles by a fleece. He curses Apollo for leaving him suburban and wonders why. Hung up on deficit tall tales, time to skedaddle. He scatters his essence, congeals as out of sync archive, soon a tourist assuming the name Cupid, his preferred waggery. Secures lodgings at the Sea View Inn, overlooking shaggy dog parlour. In Tudor Rose, he enumerates orders in antique Greek. Barmaid attends. He recounts midsummer mischief. Egyptian queen and Roman soldier, hotheads in Verona, darts cast oblivious, arrow tips misaligned, tales of truth frayed, lies and brutality, the war in his helix. Tipsy, feeling the taxu, Eros hunts, something of an odyssey here, settles for sweet and sour chicken balls served exclusive as sacrifice. So fight, epic. Settling on the shingle under cryptic clouds and heroic semicircle moon. He cites Socrates' marvellous lunacy, Plato's disdain. He acts out his famous Sappho tease and replays missing the target with Foucault. Spatters at Uranus. What was the fucking deal with Nietzsche? Back in his room, he listens to Little Hampton Friday night sirens. Lays on an ancient divan, his noodle like an illuminated globe. Casts spinning thoughts way back to his parents. Relives the contours of their love, the ultimate in pleasure and pain. He embraces his own spun out anticlimax. Nothing alters. He lives his own impossible binding. So the first question that I was asked is, how would you describe your writing process? Um, it varies, actually. So I always have a couple of notebooks on the go. Uh, and in those notebooks, I will write down ideas. I will write down things I see, things I hear. I've got a long list of words, words that I discover for the first time and look at their meaning. Um, I love writing down things I hear other people say uh, before 
COVID, I would travel a lot with work and uh, would just eavesdrop on conversations uh, whilst at the airport, whilst on a train, whilst in a bar, whilst at a conference, and I would write down things that I heard people say and just, you know, people just say some funny, funny things and some profound things. And actually then you can use, I could use those as inspiration to a line in a poem or a title. Um, the other thing I used to do a lot when I traveled, uh, I like craft beer and I'd always, whatever city in the world I'd be in, I'd find a craft beer bar, uh, particularly in North America. They have some great, weird and wonderful names and I'd write down and I have a long list of the names of beers and I incorporate them into poems. Um, and in fact, one, I've got a, a pamphlet hopefully coming out next year um, that was inspired by, the well, the first poem in it was inspired by the name of a, of a couple of beers in a bar I spent a couple of hours in a couple of years ago. Um, so, um, yeah, I listen out for things, things that I see, things that I hear, uh, write down my ideas. The first drafts of all my poems I write in another notebook uh, and then I'll type them up um, and they will, I might ch type them up word for word as written in the notebook or they might be slightly changed as I type them, they might just evolve and uh, then I just leave them. Uh, for a little while. Which moves on to the next question, how do I edit my work? So when I go back to the poem, uh, I just, I'll read it out loud a couple of times, see how it sounds, see if um, it flows, do I trip up on any lines, do I stumble? Um, and then I try and, if, I, if that happens, I'll try and finesse those lines to stop the stumbling. And then it's looking at I look at words, is it the right word? Does it, is it in the right place? Are the lines in the right place? And then it's about looking at unnecessary words and trying to trim the poem down. And then finally for me, it's about how it will look. Do, do, do I want space? Do I want the lines to, you know, the stanzas and the lines to look blocky? Do I want to use the page? Um, can I do anything with the text in, in terms of how it looks? And then the final bit of the editing process, if I think it's a poem that I want to actually send off somewhere or put into a collection to save for later, if I want to send it to a journal, uh, then I'll share it with um, my critical friend, Barbara, who's the other half of Flight of the Dragonflies, um, and see what she thinks. And then there will be some more editing based upon feedback that she gives me. And I'm also a member of a couple of writing groups and I might share poems at the writing groups and take feedback from uh, other members of the group. So that's really how I would edit my poems. So the next question is, what book or author has helped to, to inspire or influence your work? Um, there's a poem called The Hitcher by Simon Armitage. And if it wasn't for that poem, I wouldn't have got into poetry. I heard it on the radio in the mid nineties and I, I just loved it. And to me, I had never really bothered with um, poetry. Well, I hadn't bothered at all. And there's no, never really about it. I didn't, I thought poetry was, you know, all um, sonnets and meter and rhymes and about love and angst. And yeah, it just wasn't for me. Um, and I heard this poem and it just, it was just so different and I was really taken with it and went out, I think the next day and bought the collection that the poem was in and loved the poems in it. So early Simon Armitage stuff from the late night, mid and late nineties, really inspiring, just really made me think that it's, it is possible to write poetry and move away from what I thought poetry was. Um, more recently, um, Kim Adonisio has really been inspiring, particularly whilst I was writing my dissertation. So both of these books, um, I think are fantastic. You can see there's lots of marks, uh, marked pages in this one from when I wrote my dissertation. Um, 
And then there's a long list of poets that inspire me, just in their style and the way they write. And I've made a list, I've written a few down. Kim Moore, Mark Waldron, Luke Kennard, Michael Robbins, Salima Hill, Bobby Parker. And I'm also inspired by my mate Barbara from the Drag Dragonflies, the way the stuff she writes, because you know, often she'll share her work with me, so I get to see that and see it evolve. That's inspiring. Folk that I do the writing groups with, they're inspiring. Um, the poets that come and read at Flight of the Dragonfly, the spoken word night that I do with Barbara, that they, those of them inspire me. Um, you know, there's a, um, people that I've met while we've been doing it on Zoom, I've met and heard that have really inspired me. Um, Tom McCall, uh, Mark Coverdale, Kieran Higgins. Oh God, I could name those and those and those. Um, and uh, I'm also inspired by a lot of the poets that are published by the Hedgehog Poetry Press. Um, and, you know, there's so many of them, I, I won't even begin to rattle off all the names. Um, what am I currently reading? I'm currently reading the latest forward book, the forward collection for the Port Forward Prizes. Oh, I forgot in my inspiration, I happen it's a bit, a bit embarrassing. John McCulloch. Um, uh, John uh, taught on the creative writing I made I did, and he was also my supervisor for my dissertation. So yeah, very inspiring, and I love his poetry. Got all these collections. And he's been a guest poet for us at Flying the Dragonfly in the past. So yeah, sorry, John, if you if you watch this for forgetting you. Um, yeah, so uh, Forward Book of Poetry is what I'm currently reading. Uh, it reminded me about John because he's nominated for Best Single Poem and it appears in here. And I love the forwards. I've got all of them from the early 90s up to this one um, because you, know, you can't keep up with all the poetry in the world and this just brings together some of the really good stuff from the year. Don't like it all, never have, but there are some really outstanding poets in here that I might have missed. And actually every year when I get this, I go through it and end up spending more money on getting other collections. So there's a few in here that, um, Caleb Femi, I haven't heard of, a book called Poor, which I've just ordered. Um, and there's a couple of others in here that I will be buying that collection. So yeah, forward, always a good read. And then the final question, what advice do I have for current creative writing students? Um, I guess the first bit of advice is share your work. Don't be afraid to share. Share it with anyone who's willing to have a look and then take on board the feedback. The first thing that I learned was that you need to listen to the reader. You need to say, hear what they've got to say about your words. And actually, um, it wasn't until sharing my work on the MA that I realised that most of my writing had been in isolation, hadn't really shared any of it. So actually once I started to share it, I improved. And um, my first publications came, my first journal acceptances happened after sharing my work with others and getting feedback. So that'd be the first thing I'd say is share your work, take the feedback on board and act upon it. Um, if if you're in a if you've got a good cohort who who all want to improve, no one's going to be mean. No one's going to be nasty. They're going to, any feedback is going to be useful to help you improve because you're also going to be able to give feedback. Uh, the other bit of advice is read 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 widely. You know that those list of the poets that I mentioned. You know reading their work just helps inspire. You know how do they write? How do they put their words on the page? It, it's, it gives you ideas, it gives you inspiration. I would also suggest that you don't pigeonhole yourself. So when I started my MA, I'd only ever written poetry, nothing else. By the end of it, I'd written a couple of short stories, some flash fiction, a, screen, a mini screenplay, a 30 minute play. Um, and that was really invigorating and inspired me, I inspired myself by taking on those things and the play is something I'm still tinkering with and I hope to send it somewhere eventually because um, it got some really good feedback 
and I really enjoyed writing it and I'm still enjoying tinkering with it. Um, and the other bit of advice I'd probably give you is uh, if you haven't done so already, um, set up a spoken word night. It's great fun, it gives you opportunity to share your work more widely and it gives you an opportunity to hear other poets or flash fiction or prose um, and it, it, you know, it, it might evolve into something. So Flight of the Dragonfly, the spoken word that I've already mentioned, that came about with DMA. There was a group of us who put that on um, to promote an anthology we had to produce as part of the course. We were in a pub in Brighton for a long time, for a few um, months, uh, and then um, COVID came along and we went online. It's now just two of us doing it. Um, we, we perform every five to six weeks. Oh, so we host it every five to six weeks. And um, out on the back of that, we now produce an electronic journal called Flights. And we're hoping moving into 2022 to become a small press and start to produce some um, hard copy publications. And that's all came about by doing a spoken word. And as I've already mentioned, you know, particularly by doing the spoken word on Zoom, we've had some great guest poets, Christina Thatcher, one of them, who's another great poet. Um, and we've um, met some great poets and writers from um, all over the place, you know, from around the world. I've probably prattled on more than enough. And I'll leave it there. Thanks for having me. Cheers.